to a comfortable sitting position. If you have very tight hips, feel free to elevate the hips with the block or with the towel loaded. We are going to do a very quick five minutes guided meditation together so that everybody can relax your mind. And then after that, we can do a little bit more stretching to relax the body, okay? So just sit up tall with your eyes closed. Take a breath in. And then exhale, raise it out. Let's do it one more time. Take a breath in. Feel the expansion of your rib cage. And then exhale, raise it out from your hips. Keep your shoulders relaxed by lengthening your entire spine. Imagine you are sending the crown of the head all the way to the ceiling. And then exhale, raise it out from your lips. Now I want you to imagine there's a cup of tea or coffee right in front of you. It's still hot, you can see the steam coming out. It's your favorite flavor. Will you take a nice breath in? Feel the aroma of the tea or coffee comes into your body, through your nostril, through your skin. It penetrates inside your body and you are indulge yourself into this fragrance. When you exhale, Imagine the air you're breathing out is trying to cool off the surface of the tea or coffee. Keep doing this for a few times. Every time you breathe into the aroma, every time you're breathing out, of the surface of the tea or coffee. For your next inhalation, feel the warmth coming from the cups. Imagine you are holding the cup right in front of you. You can feel the warmth of the cup that comes into your body from your hands, your fingers, your palms. The warmth does not stop just on your hands, does not stop just on your arms. It circulates along the whole body. Are you feeling it now? Even though it exists in our imagination only, are you feeling the heated sensation, the warm sensation through your hands to your whole body now, even to your pelvis, to your belly, to your legs, to your feet. For your next exhalation, take a look at the cup. When you're breathing out, the air you're breathing out is creating ripples on the surface of the tea. see the air is creating small circles 
on the surface of the tea or coffee. And it's gradually expanding to larger circles. You can see them with your eyes closed. You can feel them with your Just focus on your breathing and your visualization of this tea or coffee cup. Notice how your breathing has slowed down after a cup of runs, a cup of repetition. Draw your palms in front of your heart center. Bow your head to your heart. Namaste. Good. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's come to uh, all four positions now. Shoulders stacking above the wrists, hips stacking above the knees. If you have very sensitive knees, feel free to cushion the knees with towels or fold your mat, okay? Let's do a simple cat-cow stretch. As you inhale, come into the cow pose, sending your tailbone up, soften your belly, sending your chest forward. And exhale, tailbone going down, draw your belly in, pushing the hands as you're widening your shoulder blades. Initiate the movement from the tailbone, so inhale, tailbone going up. Soften your belly, chest going forward. Really drag your hands back a little bit, sending your chest forward. And exhale the other way. Relax your head, eyes looking back to your belly button. Two more times. Inhale, coming to your cow pose. Feel the contrast between these two shapes. And then use this chance to observe if any parts of the body feels particularly tense or sore or tight today. One last time, inhale, come into a cow pose. And then exhale to a cat. Now come into the neutral spine position. Straighten your left foot back, left leg back, placing your left foot to the floor and turn your right knee 90 degrees to the right side. Reaching your left arms to the ceiling and then make eight circles with your left arms. So mobilize your left shoulders. Especially if you're doing an office job or even if you're working from home but you're spending a lot of time in front of a computer, now is a nice time to create some space for your shoulders. Okay? The other direction, eight big circles. And notice if every direction, every angle feels equally smooth to you. If certain angle and direction feels tight, then it's a good indication of some tightness there. Now reaching your arms over your head, relax your arms. This is very important. A relaxed arms look soft like this, not like this. Okay? Sometimes I find it a little bit funny that students does not understand how relax, what relax means anymore. So when the teachers say relax your arm, they will still straighten the arms so much. So just let it relax and soften. Right hand push. So right arm is not relaxed. Left arm is relaxed completely. You can place the hands behind the head. And then lean the head back a little bit. Open the left side of the arm. Yeah? It's a very gentle side bend here. So as you're opening the arm, turning up. Right hand keep pushing. Good. And now release. Bring your left arms up again. Turning your left arm to the left side. Drop your head back, sending your chest up. 
your left foot entirely pressing down to the floor. Your toes, your heels all to the floor. You may feel some stretch for your left chest or some stretch for your lower back. Depends on which part of the body you want to tighten. And then slowly coming back. Good. Now bring your left arms and left shoulder to the floor. Your head will be to the floor. Eyes looking at the right side. Bring your right arm behind your back. Try to grab the inner thigh of your left leg. Pushing your left arms down and then lifting your right shoulder and chest up. So coming to a twisted position. And slowly release. Good. Now let's do the other side. So straighten your right leg back, right foot to the floor. Turn your left foot 45 degrees. You can adjust the position of your left hand so it's underneath your left shoulder. Reaching your right arms up, make a big circles again. Really big circle. Our shoulder joint is a water socket joint, which means it actually has 360 degrees of freedom. Very often when we sit in front of the computer, we fix our shoulders into a certain position, and that creates some imbalance in the muscles and actually narrow the space for the joint. Switch the direction and make the other way. Good, now reaching your right arms over your head. Remember, relax your right arm, soften it. You can place the right hand behind your head and then using the head to push your right arm back. Left arm, left hand, keep pushing the floor and then turning your chest more up. You want to roll your right hips more forward and then lengthening your right leg through the toes. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Release, right hands to the floor. Now reaching your right shoulders and right arms to the floor. Right part of the head also to the floor. Left arms behind your back. Grab the inner side of your right leg. You will push it down with your right arm and then turning the left shoulder and chest up. So this is called thread needle. Good. And now slowly release. Okay. Now step your right foot forward. Outside of your right hands. If you have very tight lower body, maybe palms to the floor or maybe even fingers to the floor. So lifting base of the palms. If you are more flexible, come into your forearms. Lifting the back knees and then starting to shift forward and back. Okay, shift the body forward and back. Notice how as your legs positions and angles change, you will feel a slightly different sensation for your right leg where the thighs connects with the hips and whether the front part of your left thighs, left pelvis feel. And then you started to shifting your hips left to right as well. Just mobilize your hip joints a little bit. Good. And now you lower down your left knees first, reaching your arms forward. Okay, keep your elbows straight, palms to the floor. You push in your arms down and then lower your chest and your hips more, if possible, lifting the back knee. So coming to a very low version of laser pose. Sinking down the chest low, sinking down the hips and also shifting the hips slightly back. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Lower down the left knees to the floor, walk your hands back. Reaching your right foot back one more time. Okay, now shift the body weight back and you try to press your right heels to the floor. This is to stretch your calves muscles. Okay, so keep your right leg straight. You can hover your left knee slightly off from the floor. And if you feel you really want to press your right heels down. Okay, so if you are runners, you do a lot of hiking, or if you wear high heels often, you should feel right away in the calves. And slowly release. Good. Now let's do the other side. Step your left foot forward. You can choose palms down or forearms down. Lifting the back knee so it's easier to move. Shifting the body weight forward and back. And left to right. Lower down your right knees to the floor, walk your hands forward. 
Everyone's flexibility is different, but you need to walk the hands more forward and then lifting the back knee. Lower down the chest, lower down the hips to your comfortable level where you feel the stretch but it's not intolerable. Okay? Hold it here. Send your breath to the part of the body where you feel the most tension and tightness. Lower down your right knees to the floor, walk your hands back. Now this time it's calf stretch again. So straighten your left leg back, pressing your left foot to the floor. So your left heels will be a little bit distance off from the floor, but you try to press down your left heel to the floor. So feel the calf stretch. Keep the left leg straight. You can hover your right knee slightly off, pushing the hands down, pushing your left heel down. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Very good. Now release your both knees down to the floor, and then sit your hips towards your heels. We are going to stretch our ankles a little bit now. So this can feel really intense for some of you. Just be gentle with yourself. So you're leaning the body to one side, lifting the knee higher up until you feel enough stretch on the front side of the ankles, okay? So do this dynamically for a couple of times. You lower down the knees, you lift up the knees, lower down the knees, and lift up the knees. Every time you should be able to create a tiny little bit more space compared to previous times. So you can come up a little bit higher. Okay, so very often our ankle position is in this shape, right? And the muscles in the front side get shorter. So now is the time to create some space there. Yeah. Okay, that's switching sides. So lifting the knees. Lifting the knees. You are pointing your toes like ballerina. If you can, keep sitting in this position, kneeling. If you feel this is already too much for your ankles, it's okay. You can change your sitting position to any comfortable sitting position of your choice. Okay? Now we're stretching the wrists. So palms down to the floor, fingers pointing to your knees. The base of the palms will be lifted a little bit and that's okay. The, the further away the hands are from the knees, the more intense stretch for your forearms are. If you're very tight, place the hands closer to the knees. If you are more flexible, placing the hands further away. So you round your back, shifting your hips back, and you should feel right away from here. So if you do a lot of typing for work, typing for Facebook or Instagram, now is the time to release the forearms muscles. Okay. Again, be gentle with your own body. Listen to the feedback the body passes to you. For the stretch, it's not the deeper, the better. It's the more suitable to you, the better. So you just need to find out your stretch hold. And then when you get really close to that stretch hold, you need to stop. And slowly release. When you release out of it, you may feel the blood circulation rushing into your palms and your fingers. Yeah. And then slowly shake it out. Now we need to stretch the other side of the forearms. So palms facing up this time, fingers pointing to your knees. If you are more flexible, you may be able to straighten your elbows as you're shifting your hips back and then round your back. If you are tighter, keep your elbows slightly bent, that's fine. The effect will be quite similar. When you round your back, shifting your hips back, and then feel the sensation on the other side of the forearms. Slowly release. Good. Shake it out. Make some circles. And the other directions. Good. Now we are going to change the way we kneel. Tuck your toes under. This will stretch the tissues at the bottom of your feet. So tuck your toes under and sit your hips towards your heels. 
coming to your eagle arms, right elbow on the top, letting the elbows high, fix the elbows, and then turn the forearms clockwise towards the right side. You will feel the sensation on your right shoulders, where right shoulder connects with the neck, the upper trapezius muscles, where usually tensions accumulate easily in that area. Now it's time to release it. Coming back to the center, chopping an apple in front of you. And then lift up. Now reaching up high. Eyes looking up, chin up, chest up. And slowly release. Let's do the other side. Left elbows on the top. Lifting your elbows high, turning your both forearms towards your left side. Make sure the right shoulders is level, not like this, but make both shoulders square. Coming back to the center, chopping the apple in front of you. Coming back to the center, lifting both forearms up, eyes looking up, chest up. Good, and slowly release. I bet you really want to straighten your legs now. So let's sit your hips back and then straighten your legs forward. Tap the knees to the floor. You may feel some circulation rushing into your feet. Same as right after we did the wrist stretch. And then turning your legs inside and out like this for a couple of times. Make a circles with your ankle joints. And notice how your ankle joints right now at this moment Feel differently compared to before. Okay, now let's bend the knees, shifting your hips more forward, your hands, palms facing down, fingers pointing back. Keep your elbows slightly bent, just tiny a little bit. And then as you're shifting your hips forward, you're also lifting your chest up. Feel the stretch on the front side of the shoulders, the deltoid muscles, and also a little bit on chest, where the chest connecting with the shoulders. If you don't feel the stretch sensation on the shoulders, everything is on the elbows, then it's even more important you bend elbows tiny a little bit, okay? So the more your hips, the more you move your hips forward, the more sensation you will feel on the front side. You can adjust the position and the distance between the hips and the hands based on the degree of stretch you already feel on the front side of the shoulders. Okay. Now very slowly turn your neck to draw a circles. Very slowly. Once you're done one circle, switch the direction for the next circle. Okay, now bring the head back to the center, moving the head slowly, one hand forward, the other hand forward, and then coming out. Straighten your left leg forward, bend your right knees. We'll be doing a twisted side bend. Left hand, grab your right knees if you can, otherwise you can relax your left arm to the floor. Reaching your right arms up over your head, but remember you need to turn your chest facing the side or even up. Let your right side of the rib cage face the ceiling, and then reaching your right hand towards your left foot. Make sure your right hip is not lifted off from the floor, and you feel a nice stretch on the right side of the mouth. If your right hand can grab your left foot, pushing the toes forward, so creating a little bit of traction effects for the side. If you cannot grab the foot, that's okay. As long as you reach towards your left foot, you are lengthening already. Good, and then slowly coming out. Now we're doing a twisted forward bend. 
So your left hand next to your left hip, reaching your right arms forward outside of your left leg. Depends on your flexibility, it can be knees, can be cuffs, can be ankles, can be the bottom of the foot, okay? And then as you take a breath in, lengthening your spine, as you exhale, forward bend with the twist. Grounding your right side sitting bones to the floor, and then feel the stretch for the back of your left leg, and also for the lower back. Again, depends on where you are tighter, the sensation you feel may be different. And slowly coming out, reaching your right leg forward, left leg straight this time. Twisted side bend, right hand either grab your left knees or just relax your right arm to the floor. Left arm reaching over your head. Either you can grab your right foot and then pushing your right foot forward to create more space on the left side of the body. Or you're just dangling your arms in the air, but you keep reaching towards your right foot direction. Make sure your left hip sitting bones is not lifted up, grounded down. Slowly coming out, twisted forward bend, right hand by the sides of the right hips, reaching the left arms forward, grab the outside of your right leg, either knees, calves, ankles, or the foot. Try to reduce the gap between your belly and your right back, grounding not only your left sitting bone to the floor, but also left knee closer to the floor. Three. Two and one. Slowly release. Good. Now you bend your left foot this way, push the knees up. Okay? And then you lean the body forward using the hands to press them down and then coming to a transversal squat position. If you are quite tight on this direction, you can lift up the hips higher, pushing the hands to the floor. And what I want you to do now is to switch left to right, left to right for a couple of times. For those of you who are more flexible, without using the hands, try to switch left to right, right to left. Okay. Okay, now sit your hips to the floor. Setting up a Z sit position. With your left knee bent, right knee also bent, a left foot touching your right knee. Okay, bring your left hand next to your left hips. We'll be doing a very gentle back bend. Keep both knees still onto the mat. Inhale, pressing your left hand, swing your arms up, sending your chest up, sending your hips forward. Remember, both knees are still to the floor. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, pushing your left up, sending your hips forward, feel more stretching on the front side of the pelvis, the belly, and then coming down. One more time. Inhale, press and lift it up, and coming down. With the legs in this position, reaching the arms to the side. Lift up the spine as you breathe in, and exhale, right hand down, reaching the left arms over your head. Feel the stretch on the side. We're going to do a lot of side bending, a lot of twists today to release the back muscles pressure. Coming back, left hand down. Make sure your right hip is not lifted like this. Grounding your hip bones down to the floor. Left hand push, reaching your right arms over your head. So again, feel the stretch on the side one more time. Good, coming back to the center. Now with your left hand, turning the fingers facing forward, still place it right next to the hips. We're going to do straight the needle with the twist. So reaching your right arms up as you breathe in, and exhale, straight the needle, right arm going under the left armpit. Try to ground in your right hip bones to the floor as much as you can. Inhale up, and exhale, twist one more time. So you wanna turn your right armpit more towards the back direction. Sometimes you hear this clicking sounds on the spine, which is really good, okay? Which means you did some simple chiropractic work for yourself. Moving the knees like this, left to right, left to right for a couple of times. Mobilize the hips still. 
And now let's try the other way. Okay? So your right knee bend, left knee bend, right foot touching your left knee. Right hand next to the hips. As you inhale, push, lift up your chest, your armpit, sending your hips forward. And then exhale down. Inhale, pushing your left up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale, push your left up. And then exhale down. Reaching the arms to the sides, lengthen through the fingertips, and then sit up tall. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, left hand down, reaching your right arms up over your head. Coming back to the center, right hand down, reaching your left arms up. Remember, grounding your sitting bones to the floor as much as you can. And then right hands actually push the floor so that left side of the body feels more space. Even between the rib cage bones, feel the expansion. Good. Coming back to the center, turn your right hand's fingers facing forward. And we're going to do this twisting movement again. Same thing, grounding the sitting bone on the left side to the floor as much as you can. Inhale, reaching your left arms up. And exhale, thread the needle, left arm going under the right armpit. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale. Yes, now coming back to the neutral. Again, moving the knees like this, side to side. Try to let both knees touch the floor if you can. Now keep both knees up. Resting your elbows above the knees. Left hand supporting your chin. Right hand supporting the back of your head. And then you are using your arms, just take a look here. Using your arms to twist in your head towards one side so you feel some stretch for the neck. Be gentle because the neck is quite fragile. Um, you are controlling the strands by yourself now. So left hand under the chin, right hand behind the head. And then twist your body to the left side until you're feeling that stretch on the neck. Good. Release. Right hand supporting your chin. Left hand behind your head. Twist to the right. And slowly release. Now we're doing another shoulder stretch. Placing the elbows in this way, creating a chicken wing shape. Top of the hands, outside of the rib cage. Okay? And then you bring one elbow in, side of the knees. The other elbow also inside of the knees. You walk your feet closer and you squeeze your knees towards the center to feel the yang stretch for the shoulders. If you find it really hard to do this, alternatively, you can do one side at a time. So just bring one elbow inside of the knees, hands outside of the rib cage, palms facing out. Okay? Use your knees to squeeze the elbows to the center. Use the elbows to push the knees slightly out. You can use your left hand to help as well if your knees are in this position. It means there's a lot of tension for the shoulders. Grab your outside of your right knee and use your left hand to pull it in a little bit. Okay? So you can do this, hold it for five, six breaths, and then you switch in size this way. Okay? But if you are perfectly okay doing two sides at the same time, as you walk your feet closer, you can control how much of stretching sensation you wish. So the more you squeeze the knees towards the center, the more you will feel. And slowly release. Circle your arms into the circles. Pushing the hands down, lift up. Your hips are from the floor, coming to a squat position. Maybe your heels cannot touch the floor, looks like this. It's okay. See if you're moving your feet a little bit further away house. If you still cannot touch the floor, that's fine. You can roll your mat, creating a little bit of thickness, like this. And then you swap, okay? Once you're coming to the swap position, I want you to internally rotate your hips, bring your knees down to the floor, and then lift back. 
They are the knees down and the left up. It's also for the hips mobility, so just keep doing this movement for a couple of months. Now placing the hands to the floor, I'll show you from the side. You will lift up the hips so you can keep the knees bent. Grab the opposite elbows. Let the spine dangling in the air. Let the gravity do the work. Okay, now keep the head as the last thing to coming up. So knees still bent, you will lengthen your tailbone down first. And then start to rotate your pelvis. With your lower back slowly coming up, knee back slowly coming up. Vertebra by vertebra, you will gradually coming up to a standing position. The head will be the last thing to lift up. Okay? Now reaching your arms up, right hand grab your left hand's wrist as you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, side bend. The hips will go to the opposite direction as your arms. Your right hand grab the left hand's wrist and pull. Feel the space created between the ribcage bones. Three, two, one. Coming back to the center, left hand grab your right hand's wrist. As you inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, coming to a side bend again. Pushing your hips more towards the right, reaching your arms more towards the left. Turning your right arm slightly up. And slowly coming back to the center. Good. Now separate your feet as wide as your pelvis apart and just make easy circles. Shifting your hips left, right, over and back. Very easy circles. And switch the direction. Now bend your knees a little bit and then slide your hands on top of your knees. Okay, we'll be doing twisting again. So inhale, prepare, chest going forward, exhale, twist your body to the left side. You are using your hands to push the knees to the side as you're turning the body towards the left. Coming back to the center, inhale, prepare, and exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, prepare, one more time, exhale, twist to the left. Remember, use the hands to push the knees away from each other. Coming back to the center, breathe in. And as you're breathing out, this time twist to the right. Good. Coming back to the center, stand up. Remember, just now in the introduction, I say we are going to use an elevated platform for some stretching on the lower body. So now you can find the chair, sofa, or your bed or even a simple elevated surface right next to the window, like this one that I have. So very easy, you just step your left foot onto this elevated surface, right foot down, and we'll be doing a dynamic lunge. So you're shifting your hips forward, sink it down a little bit, and then coming back, okay? So keep doing this for a couple of rounds. Every time you shift forward, keep the back knee straight, and I feel like you're squeezing your buttocks on the back leg to opening the front side of the pelvis. So every time you should be able to go more forward and lower. Okay, I love this stretch because no matter how flexible you are or how tight you are, you can go a tiny little bit more than your original level because of the space to shift more forward. And another thing is, without doing this onto the mask, it's a good news for those ones with sensitive knees, uh, sensitive knees, right? Sometimes you have sensitive knees, and when doing this one onto the mask, it feels quite uncomfortable. Okay? This time when you shift forward, hold it here. Keep the back knee straight, squeeze the buttocks. When you squeeze the muscles on the back of the body, the front side of the body will gradually open up. So hold it here for three, two, one, let's add a side bend here. So left hand pushing the left knee more towards the right, and then reaching the right arm towards the left. Hold it here for three, two, one. Coming back to the center. Same foot. This time you will try straighten the left leg. 
with your heels onto this elevating surface, and then you're laying your body forward. You can press your thighs down to the floor and then feel some stretch behind your knee. Inhale, bend your left knees again. Exhale, straighten your left leg and stretch in the back of your left leg. For those of you who are more flexible, you can fold over deeper. Okay? So bend your knees again and then straighten. Every time you should make it more straight. And then remember to square the pelvis so your left hip's going back. Right hips going forward. One more time. Inhale, chest forward, knees bend. And exhale, fold over from your hips. So instead of rounding your back to get your forehead down, I want you to keep your spine straight. So as inhale, you're creating more space on the lower back. As you exhale, keep the spine straight and then reduce the gap between the belly and your thigh. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Slowly release. Okay? Sorry, I need to face you with my back now. But this one is a laser pose with elevated surface. Let me show you on this side. And later I will switch. So the same foot just now step onto the elevated surface. Same foot. I'm just changing so they can see me better. My first go onto the chair or the sofa. You turn the body to the side. And then you bow forward, just bouncing a little bit. Be gentle here. And then notice how your right hips feel, or left hips feel, if you're still doing the left side, okay? And then for those of you who are more flexible, maybe your hands can touch the floor. Then you try to grab your opposite elbows and sinking your elbows lower. Relax your head as well. Hold it here for three. Keep bouncing. Two. And one. Slowly release, okay? Now let's do the other side. So I did my left foot first, now it's the right foot. You come into this dynamic lunge again, shifting the hips forward, keep the back leg straight, and then coming back. Shift forward, and coming back. Shift forward, and coming back. One more time, shift forward, sink it down, hold it here. Five, four, three, two, one. Pushing your right hand to the right knee towards the left. Reaching your left arms over your head towards the right. Creating more space for the hip flexor, for the size of the waist. Three, two, one. Coming back to the center. Now we are going to stretch the back of the legs. So coming to like a half split position. Toes are pointing up like this. Okay. And then you can push down your elbows. Forearms towards the thighs. Bend, release, and then pushing down again. This time you try to get a bend closer to your thighs. Bend, and then straighten. Every time go a little bit more. Last one. Bend, and then straighten, and then hold it here. And when we are doing this pose, maybe you are feeling more on the lower back. Uh, majority of the people probably feel it on the hamstring, but maybe your back is pretty good type, so you feel on the lower back. And that's perfectly okay and normal. So as long as you are feeling something, you are doing the right pose, okay? It doesn't matter what you look like, what matters more is how you feel at this moment in this pose. And slowly release. Now remember, you need to turn the body to the side, and doing the laser with the back thing. I did my right side already, so now I'll turn to my left. With my left foot onto the elevated surface, I bend forward, relax my head and neck, and just bouncing like this. Five, four, three, two, and one. And slowly release. Good. Last one was this elevated surface for the lower body. You sit onto it, okay? And then you bend your left foot knees with your left foot on above, above your right knees. I believe a lot of office workers, if you have ever searched yoga for office worker, you will see this pose. It's for a heap stretch. So once you're coming to this position, your legs position looks like a pigeon, but you are sitting. And then you're leaning your body forward to feel the stretch from the outer hips. You can bring your left hand to pressing your left knees down gently. As long as your knees doesn't complain, 
you can press it down a little bit more. For those of you who are more flexible, getting your chest to touch in your shin bones, hands down to the floor or palms down to the floor. Okay, so hold it here for five, four, three, two, and one. Twist your body to the right using your left elbows. Place it underneath your left foot. Namaste hands, or you can just place your hands this way. Twist. And then sink it down, the knees on the left side. Three, and two, and one. Slowly release. Okay? Now, right foot on above your left knees. If you feel knee pain at this position, using your right hands outside of your right knee, pushing your right knee towards your right hands. So pushing to the sides first, and then you press it down. Pushing to the side first, creating a little bit more space for the hips to rotate. And then when you bring your knees down, you will find the stretch more comes from the hip external rotation rather than twisting of the knee joints. Okay? And then you bend forward, either doing this easy option or this harder option. Okay? Now with the twist, maybe you can only twist halfway with your right arms pushing to the foot this direction, that's okay. But if you can twist more, getting your elbows underneath the foot, connecting the hands and then push your elbows towards the foot. Foot pushing the wrist, uh, elbows back and then turning the left shoulder and chest more up. And slowly release. Okay, so this mini series of lower body stretch using a chair or elevated surface you can do it every day especially now you're working from home right it doesn't feel um, awkward or embarrassing anymore when you are taking a break from your work just do some simple stretch like that okay good now let's grab a towel and then we'll do some shoulder stretch if you only use a small towel Maybe you need to fold it diagonally and then hold on to the two diagonal corners to make it a little bit longer. But if you are using a strap or a larger tower, then you can just control the distance directly between the hands. So this is a, my favorite shoulder stretch. Basically, you hold on to this thing and then you bring your arms from forward to back without bending your elbows. If that's really hard, you can bend your elbows a little bit but remember that power should not be touching the back of the hat or the back of your shoulders. It should be from where. But ideally, keep the elbow straight. You can increase the distance between the hands if it's too intense for you. And then once after several repetitions, you feel more open, you can reduce the hands distance. Okay? So this is a really nice and very practical, easy stretch you can do at home. I always joke. Not exactly joking, it's actually quite true. Um, after shower, after you dry up yourself, you still have towel on your hands. What do you do? Just do a couple of quick shoulder stretch. If you have shoulder pain, tight shoulders, tight necks even, just do a couple of this, okay? Now I started to feel more open. I will narrow the distance between the hands, reaching forward and back, reaching forward and one more time, reaching forward and back. Okay, now let's change the way we hold the towel. This one is going to be a little bit intense, more intense than the one just now. You will hold the towel behind your body, but notice my palms are facing forward. Okay, so you bring the towel behind your body, but palms are facing forward, both palms, and then you are hold on to the towel this way with your thumbs and your index fingers. Now you bring the towel from back to forward without bending the elbows if you can, otherwise bend your elbows tiny a little bit. So you should feel a lot of stretch for the shoulders and the area where the shoulder connects with the chest. Okay, so I personally feel this one is more intense than the first version, and that's the feedback I get from the majority of my students as well. So just adjust the distance between your hands according to your own needs, own body feedback. Two, 
You don't have to kneel in, in this position like me. You can even sit on a chair when you are doing this. But the chair doesn't have a back, hopefully, so that you can move freely. Now the next one is a cow face arms. Bend your bow's elbows, reduce the distance between the hands this time, and you hold on to the towel this way. And now I will show you from the side, your bottom hand is pulling the towel down and back at the same time. Your right elbows is hugging in. So don't let elbows go into the sideways like this. Hug the elbows in. The armpit is facing right forward. And you pull the bottom hand, pull the towel down and back until you feel the stretch on the shoulders. If you are doing this one together with your family, friends, then lovers, then that's perfect. One person can do it for the other. So one person just hold on to the towel, the other person placing one hand onto your partner's shoulder, the other hand will grab the towel gently back. Okay? Communicate with your partners all the time to see if the stretch is already too much or not enough. Okay? So hold it here for three. Two and one. Slowly release. Let's switch in size. Bottom head, pull the tower down and back at the center. The top elbow needs to hug you in, face the ceiling. Armpit also facing forward. Hold it here for five. Try ribs in. Don't use the back bend to create a compensation. So keep the spine neutral and then flex more from the shoulder. So open your armpit ankle more, basically. Three, two, and one. Slowly release. Good. Circle your arms around. That's good. Okay. Now we'll use this elevated platform for the shoulder stretch and a little bit of back bend again. So first version, arms straight, palms onto your chair or sofa, walk your knees back, very important to walk your knees back, so you have the space to sinking down the chest. See, I'm stretching my shoulders, but also doing a gentle back bend here, okay? So creating more space on the front side, which will help improve your posture. When you are slouching in front of your back, Bending forward, the front side of the body gets really tight. The muscles get short, and the tension is there, the muscles are imbalanced. So now we're creating more space on the front side. Melt down the chest, melt down the armpit. You are placing palms onto the platform or the sofa. So um, maybe right here, okay, closer to your waistline is you touching the edge of the chair or the sofa as you're sinking down. You can always adjust the position of your hands if you feel the forearms is a little bit uncomfortable. But the more you can sink it down, the more you will feel. And slowly release. Okay, second version. <laughs> Let's stretch a little bit deeper. So this time you are placing your elbows onto the chair or the sofa or the bed or anything elevated. Okay, so elbows onto the platform. Can you see me? Huh? Yes, I think so. So walk your knees back. Only the tip of the elbow is enough because I need your head to go through. So if your elbows is too in, there's not enough space unless you have super long upper arms. Now melt down the head to the floor, melt down the armpit, your chin to the floor, and send your tailbone up. So you are doing a gentle back bend. Okay? Hug your elbows closer, don't let your elbows slide out too much. The more tension and tightness you're feeling this pose, the more you need to focus on your breathing to calm down your mind and then to relax your body. Gravity is your friend here. 
So just surrender yourself to the gravity so that you can enjoy this yummy deep stretch in the front side of the body. As you're coming out, you're pressing your four upper arms down to the platform and then lift up. Nice. Oh, feels good, right? Okay, now you sit back to the mat again. We'll be doing a sitting twist after the back bend. Reaching your legs forward, twist your body to the left side. Your hands are pushing the floor to help you twist a little bit more. Try to grab in your right hip bones to the floor. So you'll feel more stretch on the sides of the body. Good. And then you're coming back to the center. Twist to the other way. And you're coming back to the center. Coming to a butterfly. If the knees are very high up, moving the feet more forward so that the knees can come in down lower. Okay. And then you bow forward, relax your head as well. If you have a block handy, you can set up the block to support your head. If you don't have the block, that's also fine. Try to release any tension for your neck. As you lower down your head, the gravity will help you stretch the neck muscles as well. Gradually coming out. Very good. 